The last time we talked about layering, we talked about technique number one, which is called filling your spectrum. Well, today I want to take it a little deeper and take a look at technique number two, which is called mimicking. Sound. Mimicking works on the idea that any sound or any instrument has a certain function as well. So a snare would have a snare function, but anything that's sharp, short and higher in pitch than a kick will probably sound like a snare. Now, if you mimic sounds, that means taking a completely unrelated sound and assigning it a certain function so it might blend into your music. So, for example, let's talk about kicks. Now, a kick sound in its most basic form is usually very deep and has a very sharp transient attack on it. A kick function is something that plays a lot of the heavy accents in your music and in terms of spectrum or mix is the deepest sound in your music, at least on the foreground. So if we're gonna create a sound or layer sounds together that mimic a kick and its function, it has to be deep. It has to have that sharp transient attack, but it also has to hold those heavy accents and be the deepest thing in your mix. We can apply this in the same way to a snare or a bass sound or a hi-hat. Okay, let's take a hi-hat for example. Hi-hats are usually very fast rhythmic accents, have a noise-like spectrum and have a sharp attack. That's usually it. So I could do it with my voice again, like or I could use something like a, a gate on running water. You might once again pose the very good question, why would you do any of this? Why? This is so much trouble to go through. Well, I don't have drums, nor do I have a place to put them here, even though I'd like to, but I do have a house. I do have a voice filled with unique characteristics and unique sounds that make it sound personal. They make my music physically sound like me. Now that's the basic idea. That's how it works. The reason this is happening, the underlying principle, is that sounds have functions. And there's very interesting things we can do with this if we start pushing that idea a lot further. For example, an instrument's function can be mimicked and the instrument replaced, or the function is replaced and the instrument stays, taking on another function itself. Maybe one instrument has two functions, or three, or five, or 15. At some point, it doesn't matter what sounds or instruments you have, but what function, what role they should have. How do you want your song to feel and how can you blend things together so that feeling makes sense? Now, let me repeat that. As long as your sounds have the roles they need, it doesn't matter what they sound like. That is so liberating creatively, just not even for musicians, but artists in general. As long as what you do works, as long as what you do gives the right feeling to your listener, to your viewer, to your dancer, to whatever, it doesn't matter what it is. I'm thinking about Billy and Phineas recording actual dentist drills and breaking glass to make their song sound creepy and nasty. I'm thinking about Timbaland beatboxing and singing his entire background vocals. I'm thinking about the hundreds of vocal artists on YouTube recording a cappella covers that sound amazing, like actual full-fledged bands. So to start practicing this, try pay attention to sounds of instruments and especially what they add to the music, what they add to the story of the music. From now on, in every track that you make, add at least one sound that isn't music related and make it make sense. Make sense? If it did and this video added any value to you, consider subscribing. And until next time, thanks for watching.